And we are so glad you're with us tonight as we dive into the center of the American debate about extremism, Islam, and all of us together. Diane, the national argument over that proposed Islamic center near Ground Zero has given rise to so much anger and suspicion, but also a genuine thirst for understanding. All these emails we have received, you have asked us such great, tough questions. We're going to try to tackle them. Hundreds of them from thousands of you. What does the Quran really say about violence against non-believers? Are Muslim women oppressed? And where are the moderate voices? in what is now the fastest growing religion in the world. For perspective, as of tonight, there are 1.5 billion Muslims on this earth, and that's 20% of the population. Christianity, still the largest religion, 33%. And that's certainly the case, of course, here in America. 165 million Protestants in this country, 68 million Catholics, only about 5 to 6 million Jews. But the smallest group there, only two to three million American Muslims of all different sorts. And as we start, we want to say that we know that this topic is so deep, we cannot possibly cover it all in one hour. And we remind you that on Sunday, ABC News will weigh in again, a town meeting with Christian Amanpour. But let's begin now with some basic questions about Islam as viewed across the divide. <laughs> Americans disturbed by Islam. I think it's a fanatic religion. The main mission of them is to convert everybody to Islam, but I don't really know that much about it. American Muslims giving an answer. Get to know us. We're just like everybody else. Being a Muslim in America, in my opinion, doesn't make me any different than anyone else. I grew up in the United States. I've never, you know, lived anywhere else. I don't know what other identity I could have. 110% American. But the fact is, nearly three quarters of Americans say they don't really know anyone who's Muslim, nor have they asked what Islam really is. So we decided to begin with what Christians might call a Sunday school lesson. If you are from God, show us a miracle. What are ordinary Muslim children in America taught about the religion founded by Muhammad? He was a good person. He was an orphan and he helped other orphans. And he always prayed. But initially, his tribe was still worshiping stones and idols, while all around him, other tribes were already practicing Christians and Jews. And then in the year 610, Muhammad was meditating in a cave when he says he had a revelation, one God. The idea of an angel speaking to you is, is a monumental uh, thing and so he ran to his wife Khatija and she was the first uh, person who converted she said I believe in you and that revelation is in the Quran the word Quran means recitation or readings and it may surprise a lot of people that the Quran is filled with stories we all know it talks about um, how the world began I guess from Adam and Eve um, and that's what Islam is in the beginning, Adam and Eve. Though in Islam, God created them equally out of dust, not one from the other. And there's also the mother Mary in the book who had a mystical conception and gives birth. The trees around her bow low so that she can pick the dates and the spring opens at her feet. And another thing inside the Quran that wasn't mentioned by that pastor who wanted to burn the book, Terry Jones, the name exalted over and over in Islam is Jesus. I was told that Jesus is the Messiah who will come back at the end of time to establish the kingdom of justice and peace. Not Muhammad? Not Muhammad, the Christ, son of Mary. So we believe Jesus is the Messiah who will come back at the end of time to establish the kingdom of justice and peace on earth. What percentage of Muslims would say that they believe that Jesus is the Messiah? Well, you cannot be a Muslim if you don't believe Jesus is the Messiah. It's in the Quran. And until Jesus comes, in the Quran, he sits at the right hand of God. So if, if you believe Jesus is a Messiah and sits at the right hand of God, what is the thing you believe that is different from Protestant and Catholic Christians? The, the thing that separates Islam from, and, and Judaism from Christianity is that we don't say that God has a son. Both Jews and Muslims do not attribute a son to God. So in the Quran, Jesus is not the son of God, nor does he die on the cross, but he is a divine prophet. And also in the Quran, 
the heart of Islam, Muhammad's five pillars, sort of like the Ten Commandments, five things that make you a Muslim. First, believe in one God, Allah, and that Muhammad is his messenger. He was like, like, listen to me, Allah is the real God. And two? Fasting during the month of Ramadan. Don't eat in the, for breakfast and lunch and snack. My parents don't let me fast, so I had to fast when I grow up, like eight. Another one, give to the poor. Charity can also be the physical act of, you know, giving some spare change to a homeless person. It could even be, you know, removing a piece of glass from the road. A fourth, make a pilgrimage to the holy city Mecca where Muhammad had his first revelation. And by the way, just as a lot of Christians can't always cite all of the Ten Commandments, not every Muslim can remember all five pillars. So far, we have four. See, I'm caught on that last one. A fifth one, pray five times a day. God uh, asked us to pray as much as we can. It could be five, it could be three, it could be more than five times. You know, the reality is that the vast majority of Muslims in the United States are not mosque attending kinds of Muslims, and that's okay. We were, you know, the equivalent of Christmas and Easter Christians. And you should know in Islam, there are no drawings of Muhammad, because he said that images might become idol worship again. And so Muhammad's religion spread and branched into many different faces, the poetic Sufis, conservative Wahhabis. The most Muslims actually live in Asia. And there were secular branches like those in Turkey. And Muhammad said that we should all be tolerant of each other's religion. Our differences are God's mercy. And after he died, history saw the first real interfaith era. For hundreds of years, Jews, Christians, and Muslims, and atheists they lived together, debated God, debated religion. In those years of enlightenment, Muslims helped create advanced math like algebra, advanced medicine like the concept of contagious disease. And by some accounts, there were Muslims in the crew, arriving in America on the Nina Pinta Santa Maria. Muslims have been in this country since uh, Columbus. We do know that Thomas Jefferson specifically included Islam when urging protection of religious freedom. And today, the estimated more than two million Muslims live coast to coast. In fact, in Dearborn, Michigan, they make up a third of the population. There are four Muslim city mayors in New Jersey alone. Miss USA is a Muslim, so are these NFL players. And as a population, according to one survey, American Muslims have twice the college degrees of the average. They make a higher income than the average. And there is this. 7,000 of U.S. military troops are Muslim, fighting around the world for the American dream. I'm a mayor of Teaneck, New Jersey. I'm in corporate finance. We have a jewelry line. American is apple pot. I want to be a teacher when I grow up. A soccer player. A scientist. I want to be a doctor. And even as we hear about vandalism and protests against mosques in America, there are already 1,900 of them rising peacefully above churches and synagogues. A beautiful new mosque is being built in my hometown, Louisville. It's all built by the people of Louisville. This is physician Dr. Amar Amasaki. We need to give back. So, hundreds of millions of peaceful Muslims say this is the real face of Islam.